March 4. Korah's Rebellion One day Korah, son of Izhar, a descendant of Kohath, son of Levi, conspired with Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and An, son of Peleth, from the tribe of Reuben. They incited a rebellion against Moses, along with 250 other leaders of the community, all prominent members of the assembly. They united against Moses and Aaron and said, You have gone too far. The whole community of Israel has been set apart by the Lord, and he is with all of us. What right do you have to act as though you are greater than the rest of the Lord's people? When Moses heard what they were saying, he fell face down on the ground. Then he said to Korah and his followers, Tomorrow morning the Lord will show us who belongs to him and who is holy. The Lord will allow only those whom he selects to enter his own presence. Korah, you and all your followers must prepare your incense burners, light fires in them tomorrow, and burn incense before the Lord. Then we will see whom the Lord chooses as his holy one. You Levites are the ones who have gone too far. Then Moses spoke again to Korah, Now listen, you Levites, does it seem insignificant to you that the God of Israel has chosen you from among all the community of Israel to be near him so you can serve in the Lord's tabernacle and stand before the people to minister to them? Korah, he has already given this special ministry to you and your fellow Levites. Are you now demanding the priesthood as well? The Lord is the one you and your followers are really revolting against. For who is Aaron that you are complaining about him? Then Moses summoned Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab. But they replied, We refuse to come before you. Isn't it enough that you brought us out of Egypt, a land flowing with milk and honey, to kill us here in this wilderness, and that you now treat us like your subjects? What's more, you haven't brought us into another land flowing with milk and honey. You haven't given us a new homeland with fields and vineyards. Are you trying to fool these men? We will not come. Then Moses became very angry and said to the Lord, Do not accept their grain offerings. I have not taken so much as a donkey from them, and I have never hurt a single one of them. And Moses said to Korah, You and all your followers must come here tomorrow and present yourselves before the Lord. Aaron will also be here. You and each of your 250 followers must prepare an incense burner and put incense on it, so you can all present them before the Lord. Aaron will also bring his incense burner. So each of these men prepared an incense burner, lit the fire, and placed incense on it. Then they all stood at the entrance of the tabernacle with Moses and Aaron. Meanwhile, Korah had stirred up the entire community against Moses and Aaron, and they all gathered at the tabernacle entrance. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to the whole community. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Get away from all these people so that I may instantly destroy them. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground. O God, they pleaded, you are the God who gives breath to all creatures. Must you be angry with all the people when only one man sins? And the Lord said to Moses, Then tell all the people to get away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. So Moses got up and rushed over to the tents of Dathan and Abiram, followed by the elders of Israel. Quick, he told the people, get away from the tents of these wicked men and don't touch anything that belongs to them. If you do, you will be destroyed for their sins. So all the people stood back from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Then Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the entrances of their tents, together with their wives and children and little ones. And Moses said, This is how you will know that the Lord has sent me to do all these things that I have done, for I have not done them on my own. If these men die a natural death, or if nothing unusual happens, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord does something entirely new, and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them and all their belongings, and they go down alive into the grave, then you will know that these men have shown contempt for the Lord. He had hardly finished speaking the words when the ground suddenly split open beneath them. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed the men, along with their households and all their followers who were standing with them, and everything they owned. So they went down alive into the grave along with all their belongings. The earth closed over them, and they all vanished from among the people of Israel. All the people around them fled when they heard their screams. The earth will swallow us too, they cried. 
Then fire blazed forth from the Lord and burned up the two hundred and fifty men who were offering incense. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Eleazar son of Aaron the priest to pull all the incense burners from the fire, for they are holy. Also tell him to scatter the burning coals. Take the incense burners of these men who have sinned at the cost of their lives and hammer the metal into a thin sheet to overlay the altar. Since these burners were used in the Lord's presence, they have become holy. Let them serve as a warning to the people of Israel. So Eleazar the priest collected the 250 bronze incense burners that had been used by the men who died in the fire, and he hammered them into a thin sheet to overlay the altar. This would warn the Israelites that no unauthorized person, no one who was not a descendant of Aaron, should ever enter the Lord's presence to burn incense. If anyone did, the same thing would happen to him as happened to Korah and his followers. So the Lord's instructions to Moses were carried out. But the very next morning, the whole community of Israel began muttering again against Moses and Aaron, saying, You have killed the Lord's people. As the community gathered to protest against Moses and Aaron, they turned toward the tabernacle and saw that the cloud had covered it, and the glorious presence of the Lord appeared. Moses and Aaron came and stood in front of the tabernacle, and the Lord said to Moses, Get away from all these people, so that I can instantly destroy them. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground. And Moses said to Aaron, Quick, take an incense burner and place burning coals on it from the altar. Lay incense on it and carry it out among the people to purify them and make them right with the Lord. The Lord's anger is blazing against them. The plague has already begun. Aaron did as Moses told him and ran out among the people. The plague had already begun to strike down the people, but Aaron burned the incense and purified the people. He stood between the dead and the living, and the plague stopped. But 14,700 people died in that plague, in addition to those who had died in the affair involving Korah. Then, because the plague had stopped, Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the tabernacle. The Budding of Aaron's Staff Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to bring you twelve wooden staffs, one from each leader of Israel's ancestral tribes, and inscribe each leader's name on his staff. Inscribe Aaron's name on the staff of the tribe of Levi, for there must be one staff for the leader of each ancestral tribe. Place these staffs in the tabernacle in front of the ark containing the tablets of the covenant, where I meet with you. Buds will sprout on the staff belonging to the man I choose. Then I will finally put an end to the people's murmuring and complaining against you. So Moses gave the instructions to the people of Israel, and each of the twelve tribal leaders, including Aaron, brought Moses a staff. Moses placed the staffs in the Lord's presence in the tabernacle of the covenant. When he went into the tabernacle of the covenant the next day, he found that Aaron's staff, representing the tribe of Levi, had sprouted budded, blossomed, and produced ripe almonds. When Moses brought all the staffs out from the Lord's presence, he showed them to the people. Each man claimed his own staff. And the Lord said to Moses, Place Aaron's staff permanently before the Ark of the Covenant to serve as a warning to rebels. This should put an end to their complaints against me and prevent any further deaths. So Moses did as the Lord commanded him. Then the people of Israel said to Moses, Look, We are doomed. We are dead. We are ruined. Everyone who even comes close to the tabernacle of the Lord dies. Are we all doomed to die? Duties of Priests and Levites Then the Lord said to Aaron, You, your sons, and your relatives from the tribe of Levi will be held responsible for any offenses related to the sanctuary. But you and your sons alone will be held responsible for violations connected with the priesthood. Bring your relatives of the tribe of Levi, your ancestral tribe, to assist you and your sons as you perform the sacred duties in front of the tabernacle of the covenant. But as the Levites go about all their assigned duties at the tabernacle, they must be careful not to go near any of the sacred objects or the altar. If they do, both you and they will die. The Levites must join you in fulfilling their responsibilities for the care and maintenance of the tabernacle, but no unauthorized person may assist you. You yourselves must perform the sacred duties inside the sanctuary and at the altar. If you follow these instructions, the Lord's anger will never again blaze against the people of Israel. 
I myself have chosen your fellow Levites from among the Israelites to be your special assistants. They are a gift to you, dedicated to the Lord for service in the tabernacle. But you and your sons, the priests, must personally handle all the priestly rituals associated with the altar and with everything behind the inner curtain. I am giving you the priesthood as your special privilege of service. Any unauthorized person who comes too near the sanctuary will be put to death. Support for the Priests and Levites The Lord gave these further instructions to Aaron. I myself have put you in charge of all the holy offerings that are brought to me by the people of Israel. I have given all these consecrated offerings to you and your sons as your permanent share. You are allotted the portion of the most holy offerings that is not burned on the fire. This portion of all the most holy offerings, including the grain offerings, sin offerings, and guilt offerings, will be most holy, and it belongs to you and your sons. You must eat it as a most holy offering. All the males may eat of it, and you must treat it as most holy. All the sacred offerings and special offerings presented to me when the Israelites lift them up before the altar also belong to you. I have given them to you and to your sons and daughters as your permanent share. Any member of your family who is ceremonially clean may eat of these offerings. I also give you the harvest gifts brought by the people as offerings to the Lord, the best of the olive oil, new wine, and grain. All the first crops of their land that the people present to the Lord belong to you. Any member of your family who is ceremonially clean may eat this food. Everything in Israel that is specially set apart for the Lord also belongs to you. The firstborn of every mother, whether human or animal, that is offered to the Lord will be yours. But you must always redeem your firstborn sons and the firstborn of ceremonially unclean animals. Redeem them when they are one month old. The redemption price is five pieces of silver as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel, which equals twenty geras. However, you may not redeem the firstborn of cattle, sheep, or goats. They are holy and have been set apart for the Lord. Sprinkle their blood on the altar and burn their fat as a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. The meat of these animals will be yours, just like the breast and right thigh that are presented by lifting them up as a special offering before the altar. Yes, I am giving you all these holy offerings that the people of Israel bring to the Lord. They are for you and your sons and daughters to be eaten as your permanent share. This is an eternal and unbreakable covenant between the Lord and you, and it also applies to your descendants. And the Lord said to Aaron, You priests will receive no allotment of land or share of property among the people of Israel. I am your share and your allotment. As for the tribe of Levi, your relatives, I will compensate them for their service in the tabernacle. Instead of an allotment of land, I will give them the tithes from the entire land of Israel. From now on, no Israelites except priests or Levites may approach the tabernacle. If they come too near, they will be judged guilty and will die. Only the Levites may serve at the tabernacle, and they will be held responsible for any offenses against it. This is a permanent law for you to be observed from generation to generation. The Levites will receive no allotment of land among the Israelites because I have given them the Israelites' tithes, which have been presented as sacred offerings to the Lord. This will be the Levites' share. That is why I said they would receive no allotment of land among the Israelites. The Lord also told Moses, Give these instructions to the Levites. When you receive from the people of Israel the tithes I have assigned as your allotment, give a tenth of the tithes you receive, a tithe of the tithe, to the Lord as a sacred offering. The Lord will consider this offering to be your harvest offering, as though it were the first grain from your own threshing floor or wine from your own wine press. You must present one-tenth of the tithe received from the Israelites as a sacred offering to the Lord. This is the Lord's sacred portion, and you must present it to Aaron the priest. Be sure to give to the Lord the best portions of the gifts given to you. 
Also, give these instructions to the Levites. When you present the best part as your offering, it will be considered as though it came from your own threshing floor or wine press. You Levites and your families may eat this food anywhere you wish, for it is your compensation for serving in the tabernacle. You will not be considered guilty for accepting the Lord's tithes if you give the best portion to the priests. But be careful not to treat the holy gifts of the people of Israel as though they were common. If you do, you will die.